Welcome to Engine Adventures off-road review of the 2020 Cadillac XT6 all-wheel drive. This is a front-wheel drive bias platform. $71,000 or something like that as it sits. And you can see not a lot of clearance there, so we may not be able to get to our steep hill if I'm not able to get past the entry to it, which requires a decent approach angle. So underneath here, you can see there's the rear differential. We'll get into that a little bit later, how all that works. And it looks like from about halfway back, there's a torque tube there. Anyway, has the same thing as the Chevy Blazer there to help protect your fuel tank. And is that more fuel tank there on the other side? Interesting. And there's your front differential. I don't know how well that shows up on here. Anyway, we'll talk more about how this system works. And it does have adaptive shocks, it says. There's your shocks there. Of course, you're not going to have very much wheel travel on this. Um, it's not meant for doing this, but it does have an off-road button. So let's get into it. Here we are in touring mode. This is just front wheel drive only. You'll hear the other side slip. Then it transfers power to the driver's side and never transfers power to the rear. This is a fuel efficiency mode for on-road driving. Even in touring mode, it is able to transfer power side to side pretty well and it makes it most of the way up this climb. Of course, when the one wheel is completely in the air, it just can't quite get enough traction to pull it up the hill. The screen came up and said all-wheel drive recommended change mode. So in touring mode, it's just going to stay in two-wheel drive. The all-wheel drive mode uses a single clutch transfer case, essentially, that sends power to the rear wheels. So it can vary the amount of force going to the rear, but it doesn't really vary the side-to-side -side force. It does that by using the braking system. This is the premium luxury trim. There is a sports trim level, and in the sport trim level, it does have the dual clutch rear end, similar to what's in the Blazer. In sport mode, the throttle's just more aggressive. Other than that, it was pretty similar. The traction control seemed a little bit less intrusive, but not much less in the all-wheel drive mode. Off-road mode reduces the throttle sensitivity, so it gives you better control. That means you're not going to hit a little tiny bump and accelerate really fast or let off more than you want to. It takes a lot more movement of the throttle pedal. This is similar to other vehicles. And then as you can see, it climbs pretty well. It seems like there's a little bit less wheel spin in this mode than there is in the other modes. I'll discuss what's going on more after this clip, but basically in touring mode, two-wheel drive, the first little spot stopped it. I've never been able to get a vehicle past that spot in two-wheel drive. Then as I go through each of the all-wheel drive modes, I can't make it past this spot unless I have a lot of momentum or a, at least a little bit amount of momentum. Um, I'm not going 20 miles an hour or anything through there. Just, you know, if I'm moving five miles an hour and I hit that in any of the modes with all-wheel drive, which of course are the all-wheel drive mode, sport mode, and off-road mode. If I do it in any of those, I can make it up past this, um, but it does struggle without that extra momentum behind it.
Here we are in off-road mode again, but this time I'm trying to have a little momentum behind it and I'm keeping the pedal pretty much on the floor through all this. You can see actually right here how well it controls wheel spin. You see how that wheel in the air is completely stopped, yet the vehicle's moving forward. That thing was on point with its braking system at that moment. While the traction control system works really well at transferring power side to side, this spot is too close to that big hole there. I'm afraid I'm gonna slide sideways and drop in. So I decided to call it quits here. I went through all the modes there and ultimately ended up on the off-road mode. It's really struggling. I can make it to the top. I mean, I'm right near the top, but I can't make the breakover angle. So we're calling it quits right there. But so basically I started in front wheel drive, couldn't do it. Switched it over to all wheel drive and couldn't do it. Switched it to sport, couldn't do it. Switched it to off road and couldn't do it. So then I had to back up and I could do it in any of those modes, all wheel drive or sport or off road mode if I had some momentum behind me. And then the off road mode, you saw it like kind of stalled out there. The last one I did, there was the off-road mode and it did kind of stall out for a minute and then it was able to get the power down somehow i had my foot floored all the way down on the throttle the whole time and it was able to figure that out and get get up there so basically you can see from here that i mean it's pretty flat pretty easy to make it up that last little bit the crest does have a dip in it that might this vehicle might struggle a little bit, but I think it can make it up. Like I said, I'm just worried about that breakover angle and with nothing there, this is right into that body panel. So I don't want to try it. Off-road driving, this thing does pretty okay as far as a smooth ride goes. I want to show you the camera there. So you can bring up the camera in front or rear while you're driving and you can change the view so you can get better angles as needed um off-road i mean it drives pretty smooth in any condition but there's such limited wheel travel as expected um, i have to keep my speeds down i'm not going to hit that 20 miles an hour but 13 to 15 is okay part of that is i'm afraid of scratching anything bottoming out just because it's a low road going vehicle I don't want to get too crazy with it, but the, the ride's plenty smooth. If you're on a really well maintained gravel road, dirt road, forest road, whatever, if it's really well maintained and you know pretty much flat, you'll have no problems cruising along at higher speeds. But this one is got tons of potholes and washboard and whatever else on it. So, I mean, we're going 20 right now and relatively smooth ride, it handles it just fine. Couple bigger bumps here. Yeah, not bad at all. Thanks for watching Engine Adventures off road review of the 2020 Cadillac XT6. This is the luxury version of the Chevy Traverse and the GMC Acadia. The Traverse, I mean, they're all built on the same platform. The Traverse is a little bit longer wheelbase. They all use this 3.6 liter V6 engine but the Cadillac is by far the nicest has a little bit different tuning on the suspension I'm sure because it has a nice ride then the interior is really nice the exterior you can see here is gorgeous overall it's a great vehicle off-road it does okay so you can see these tires are Michelin road going tires Michelin makes a great tire but their off-road tires are not as great until you get into like the military style tires that they make so uh the all-wheel drive system does okay it actually did pretty well i made it to here i could finish this but uh, i did does not have a low range even with that nine speed transmission it could use a little bit lower gearing in some spots and did the articulation test just fine has very little articulation i bet that wheel there is basically all the way in the droop can't go much lower and loved it overall if you liked what you saw hit subscribe give me a thumbs up 
If you didn't like, give me a thumbs down, comment down below, let me know what you didn't like about it. And if there's other tests you wanna see or other ideas you have, let me know in the comments. I read every comment that I get the notification for. Sometimes I don't get the notifications, which is weird, but anyway, I try to read all the comments and respond to those that need responses. Thanks for watching, have a great day.